Hello all, this is Father Anthony and Lynn for Gabriel Speaks uh, YouTube, wishing you a blessed feast that's coming up this week. And I'm going to speak about Christmas and Epiphany. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. I just want to make a comment about the, uh, the YouTube that we did a week or so ago and about the cultural pull in, in North America. And one of, the, one of the aspects of our cultural pull, I think, is the loss of innocence. Our children need to be innocent. And instead, our schools and institutions are trying them at very premature ages to make decisions about their, their sexuality, their orientation, as it's called. And I think it's cruel that kids do not have a childhood they should, no kid's brain is developed enough to make a decision of such magnitude that will determine their life. You're talking about when they, when they act confused or when one small child, when a small child acts the, um, acts the role uh, of, the, um, of, the se of the opposite sex. And people notice that and sort of encourage it sometimes. I mean, one of my little nephews was wearing his sister's dresses. That mean he's, he's gonna grow up and be gay? He got over it in five minutes. He got over it in a couple of years. So, but it's at the school system that really makes me crazy. That the, 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 the textbooks are now uh, distributing the, to the kids uh, to, to do definitions of sexuality and where they stand and how to how to help them come to turn. And I'm talking about four, five, six, and seven year old kids, nine year old kids. It's sad. It really, is sad. And we, as parents, should say something. If you know that's going on in your school, please say something and as a parent at home do everything to protect that innocence of your children they don't need to grow up so fast that these young girls for example at tender ages are already wearing makeup and short dresses and putting on some kind of jewelry to be an adult We've got a whole nother, we've got a whole nother agenda for that, but we've got to get to Christmas and, and Epiphany. Okay, I just which, had Which a, is what we said we were going to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I just here. had to throw it in. It's on my mind. I got you. Thank you for correcting me, Lynn. It's not correcting. I just want to get on the right path. Well, Christmas will be up here this week. And you know that uh, originally, during the, in the Roman Empire, they worshiped the sun god. And the Christianity transformed that, that feast by the Son of God. And uh, originally, the early Christians really celebrated Epiphany more than they did, uh, quote unquote, the Nativity or Christmas, as we call it. They uh, they celebrated uh, Epiphany, the revelation of the Holy Trinity, when John the Baptist received Christ in the River Jordan, and the heavens opened, and they heard the voice saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And they saw the Holy Spirit descend in the form of a dove. 
theophany, the revelation of God, was the feast that, I mean, they had in the Middle East, they still do, uh, a wonderful traditions around this feast, putting sweet dough on the, and the trees and let it ferment and so forth. And they make, they make sweet, sweet, sweet dough. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a real celebration. It's a real feast day. Yeah, a real feast day. And it's, it, it, the idea of the revelation of the Holy Trinity had vast importance for the, for the early Christians. The Feast of Light, as it was called. And the baptism of Christ and the inauguration of his earthly, earthly ministry. Now, of course, Christmas was, the nativity was commemorated, but later on, the two were distinctly separated. But it's a whole cycle of the revelation of Christ and human history. The revelation period when we say, I've had an epiphany. It's a revelation. We've had a revelation. That's right. <clears throat> so when we say, when we, in today's world, our secular world, Christmas is a lot of hoopla parties and gifts and material things. But in the Orthodox Church, we prepare for Christmas by a fast. Now, personally, I think at some point there should be some augmentation of that fast because most people do not keep that fast unless you're truly devoted Orthodox Christian. If you're in the workplace, there's so many parties and celebrations uh, 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 surrounding the feast of Christ, uh, the feast of the birth of Christ, and I really think that uh, uh, we need to get back as families. Read the story of the nativity to your children. Do something very wonderful during this period. You know, we celebrate the wise men coming and offering gold, incense, and myrrh, which have their own symbolism, also being the precursor uh, to, to the, the burial of Christ with the myrrh and the miracle of the myrrh-bearing woman, uh, for example. What gifts do we give to others? Isn't this a time to not only, you know, I mean, kids make lists, they go sit on Santa Claus's lap, and they tell, I want, I want, I want. Don't you think it's time that we teach our children to not to be a taker, not to be just a receiver, but a giver. You know, we established many years ago in Montreal, the week before Christmas, that the families would go visit the home of the elderly, the poor, uh, uh, old age homes, hospitals. They would spread out all over the city. And the kids would go as families. And I wanted to teach them who had so much to see what those who had so little and how much, it, how much they would appreciate a touch of grace by the presence of these children and the parents bringing them either food or, or a poinsettia plant or cookies or candies, whatever, just something to reach out and then go to the uh, soup kitchens 
and feed the homeless. A lot of our families do that in Montreal. We ought to do that across the country in North America to make sure that uh, we really celebrate the birth of giving. Christ has taught us to give. Blessed is the cheerful giver, he has said. And his, the nativity is that descent of God in Christ to bring salvation to the world. And I wonder if we understand that. Our salvation depends on our belief in the incarnation of Christ. Secondly, the incarnation was a gift of God to humanity. Therefore, in the name of Christ, would it be wonderful to go share our faith in our gift of ourselves to others? Let the children's gifts be their participating in the wider community where you live and bring the gift of love and Christ to the shut-ins, to the broken, to the wounded, to the poor, to the elderly who are so many of them living alone. I remember once the kids took a turkey and the lady said, but I don't even have an oven. How can I cook it? So we went out and got her an oven. But people, people have really have so little. And especially now with, this, with the COVID-19, COVID-19. Our countries have gone through lockdowns and people losing their jobs and kids not, be, not uh, really having any cheer in their homes. This is really a time when as North Americans, we need to extend the arm, the hand of grace to uplift others that feel so down. And you know that the stories about suicide and, and depression and so forth during this time because of this pandemic. Is not Christmas such a special time of giving for us to reach out in the name of, the, of Christ? And, and when we come to Epiphany, and you probably think I'm talking a whole lot of, and I'm all disconnected. It's not. It's everything is connected. We bless water at Epiphany. And we go bless the homes afterwards to consecrate the home in the name of Christ. That Christ is abiding in that home. The Christ that was born and that was baptized in order to reveal the Holy Trinity and for the, the homes to receive Christ to the blessing of the, of, of the homes. I know a lot of places, they don't do it anymore. Such a tragedy. Because this is a great opportunity for the children to see the image of Christ in the person of the priest to bless them, to bless the family, and bless the home, and hopefully awaken our consciousness to the reality of Christ is born. Let us glorify him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up 
but uh, on, on your on your iPad, your iPhone, or whatever. Put also the subscribe button. Please subscribe and push the notification so you'll know when uh, when we do these videos when they come out. Thumbs up, subscribe, notification. Remember those three things. And I'd be very grateful. God bless you.